Hey, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon if you're in some other time zone than us. Uh, this is Bridget Danner with Women's Wellness Collaborative, and you are here for Essential Oils for Hormones webinar. Thank you so much for attending. And thanks to those of you who are going to watch later as well. I know it might be a busy morning. So let's see. I see a handful of people on. Thank you. Hi, Pat. Hi, Marissa. Maria. Hi, Maria. Sheila. Connie. Um, as always, if someone could tell me in the chat that you hear me, that would be great. The chat is in the lower right. And I was talking to Maria the other day. And um, if you're on a phone, like a video, the Zoom app, I think the chat is on a different page. You have to like swipe right to get to the chat. It's a little clunky, but it's possible. If you're on a phone, then you won't be able to see the chat. But I think Maria is Maria's saying hi, so I guess that means you hear me. Um, great. I just want to make sure my audio is going the right place. Okay, I think that's good. So, hi, Pat. Thank you. Um, some of you guys are learning a lot about essential oils because you're coming to more than one of these, so it's so great. Hi, Angela. Good morning to you, too. Um, if you wouldn't mind to also say in the chat some specific things you'd like to learn today, like some symptoms you've been working on or where you're at with essential oils, if you're brand new or you're already kind of experienced you know, Maria is already an essential oils customer of ours, but I don't know if anyone else is on this group. Um, you know, we're a little new to, to essential oils business side, so still most people aren't. Um, hi also to Virginia and Sherry. I don't think I said hi to you guys yet. So Angela's asking for menopause, okay. So Angela, I want to say something to you and to everyone. So I will give specifically a few things for like hot flashes or, or low energy, but I did this class already and I was really surprised to get a complaint saying, oh, you made that class for younger women and, you know, the world discriminates against older women. And I was like, I just, you know, I, I didn't see it that way. So I want to share why I don't, because as women, we go through all these stages with our hormones from puberty to menopause and a lot of the same things disrupt every one of the stages low adrenal output blood sugar problems um i'm trying to think what else we're going to cover today metabolism detoxification digestion so there are, i'm going to give a few tips for again like hot flashes or perimenopause stuff like that but really no, like this is holistic situation. And I think some people are like, well, what oils was I supposed to use for menopause? Why didn't you just tell me? I will tell you, but no, like it's very individual, right? So if you're going through menopause and digestion is really hard for you right now, or metabolism is really what you struggle with right now, you have to kind of cater your solutions to, um, to the oil. So I hope that helps. Um, let me just leave it. So if you, if, if you can't hear, well, like everyone here who can hear, but, um, if you ever can't hear, but it seems like other people can hear, you have to check your own volume and your own, um, sources. Pat asked, how do you use Clary Calm Roll for hormone regulation, heavy periods with clot clotting? Okay, great. We're going to get to that one. Um, Angela said low estrogen, low progesterone, high cortisol. Okay. So we can get to all of those as well. Great. I see one more question and then we'll get started. Connie said, what if you have a problem with strong scents? That's a great question, Connie. Um, well, certainly you can dilute the oils. You don't have to use them full strength. They're, they're pretty potent. So you just have to use a little bit. Uh, if you don't really like smelling them, you could put them on the bottom of your feet. Could be an idea. You know, my husband is a little sensitive to scent too. He doesn't really like it when I have a lot of oils on, but he's come around and there's a couple oils he uses on his own now. Um, so yeah, I would say probably just dilute it. 
Connie, sometimes, I don't think this is exactly what you're describing, but I'll just mention it. Sometimes when people are chemically sensitive, um, just the stuff in the air is irritating or if you have allergies or asthma, the oils are very pure. So they're not really like a problem per se, but sometimes your body thinks they are. So that, that's just a scenario I want to mention. But I, Connie, it sounds like for you, it's a little bit more of a preference, kind of like it is with my husband. Um, so I would just like tone it down. You don't have to use as many or you could use them a little further away from your nose if you want. That's a great question. Okay, so once I go to slides, I can't, um, I can't see questions as well, but you're welcome to write them in and I will check them later. Sorry, one second. Okay. Okay, here we go. So I think most of you probably know me, but I'll just do a quick intro. Um, my name is Bridget Danner, and I started my career as an acupuncturist in Portland, Oregon. I had a very busy clinic. I owned an integrative clinic, so I had a naturopath, chiropractor, massage therapist, other acupuncturists working um, for me, uh, which was great, but I was really attracted to the online model and working from home. Definitely, frankly, was affecting my health and wellness to be so busy. So sometimes what we need to shift for our hormones is our lifestyle, right? So I made a shift and it's great. And a little bit more about me, this is my family. My son is nine. My husband's an engineer. We have two dogs. I should have showed you my new puppy. And now I live in Phoenix, Arizona. And this is my parents' backyard. And about my health, I have all these things wrong with me. <laughs> so I have lots of personal experience um, in the area of hormone dysregulation. I got into working with women after my own postpartum experience. Again, like I mentioned earlier, everything's personalized, individualized, and I had postpartum issues, but really it tied into stress and probably mold and like not feeling supported. So it's never just our hormones. It's always the, the whole picture. So we're going to focus on eight concerns of women. If, if I'm not getting to yours immediately, I think I will get to yours eventually. So just give me a little patience with the slides and we'll talk about specific oils. We'll mostly focus on that. Um, I didn't, I, you know, honestly, I don't have enough in here about how to use them, but I'll, I'll try to add some more because I think the two things that are really important is you get your hands on some oils and you know how to use them. So I'm getting a lot of interest in oils, but I don't, I don't see people converting to really using them as much as I'd like. And I don't know the hesitation, but you know, they're really fun. They're easy to use. So you just got to get your hands on them and just start using them. So essential oils are a part of plants that are like a liquid in the plant, almost like the plant's essence that's nurturing the plant and protecting the plant. And they become a gas very quickly. So I like to give the example, if you bite into a mint leaf, maybe you've had some in your garden before, there's that flavor that's very strong and released right away. And that's the oil being released. Or if you peel an orange, you know, you get that really potent smell and feel from the, from the, what is it, orange peel. Um, and that's the essential oil also. So on the plant, it's working to protect the plant and nourish the plant with antioxidants, antibacterials. And when we harvest it, we're getting the same use out of it. So they're much more po potent than herbs are. And not to say whole herbs don't have value because they certainly do, but making a cup of peppermint tea versus using a few drops of peppermint oil, it's a big difference. The peppermint oil is much stronger because it's so incredibly concentrated. So just quickly, we'll talk about some safety issues 
So quality is one thing you want to consider with essential oils. This is why I like doTERRA oils because they're really thoroughly tested. We'll talk more about that. You, you don't want to be putting something in your body or in your mouth that you, you don't trust the company. Uh, you don't want it, you know, you don't want it to be watered down with another type of oil or sometimes it's not even the oil that it says it is. So that's important to consider. Also dilution. Uh, we mentioned earlier with Connie, I think it was, that you can and usually should dilute oils um, because one thing, it makes them last longer. And then because they're so potent, some of them, excuse me, are what we call hot. So that if you put some oils like oregano and cinnamon right on your skin, they'll feel too hot. And then also if you're working with kids, dilution is a really big deal. So if you want to start working with your kids, please learn about dilution. Uh, it's just like a tiny baby should not be getting any oils on it, or it should be like, you know, a hundred times diluted. Um, my son is nine, as I mentioned, and there's a few oils I use straight on him. I like the breathe oil, but, um, you know, kids are just more sensitive and you need to learn about dilution. Animals too, you can't use it on animals the same way. And if you have animals in the home, you just need to be aware whether it's birds or cats or dogs. Again, they're not really that dangerous, but if you start going crazy with essential oils and you know, <laughs> you're know you steaming oils into the air every day, um, there are a few instances where that could be negative for your pets, especially for birds who have delicate lungs. But most people don't have birds, but some do. So it's worth mentioning. And here's the three ways to use them. So, so we'll start with this middle one, inhalation. The smell of oils is the most powerful part of the oils. So you really don't have to put them on your body or in your body. You can just smell them. And the smell directly goes to your brain, to your limbic system, to help regulate your body without you even really having to think about it. So it can lower cortisol incredibly quickly. I know someone had a question about that. It can stimulate your body to produce hormones. There was a question about that. So definitely don't, don't do what I sometimes do, which is forget to smell them. Like sometimes I just slap them on and I forget, oh, you really have to smell them. You have to take the time to smell them, whether you use a diffuser or just smell it out of the bottle. Like in this picture, you can put it on a tissue and tuck it into your bra. You can put it right on your skin or your wrist. So you keep smelling it all day. Um, so smell is really a valuable one. And then you can use it topically. About 60% of it will absorb through your skin. I mostly do this for on my abdomen. Um, it's a very absorbable area. And often I'm treating my hormones or my gut, and that's on the abdomen. But then any oil will absorb well on the abdomen. Uh, and then you can use some, but not all oils internally. This is a little more debatable. So if you don't feel comfortable with it, you don't have to do it. There are just probably, I don't know, three or four oils that I will dab on my tongue and that's about it. Um, I am curious to do some more in capsule form, but uh, again, this is kind of an optional area. So what we're gonna cover today is metabolism, skin and hair, digestion, hormones, female hormones, energy, sleep, moods, and non-toxic home. And here's a little bit about, I don't know if you've noticed, <laughs> we're sort of rebranding our business slowly about uh, hormone detox. And certainly we don't only want to detox, we also want to nourish the body and give it vitamins and minerals and rest. Um, but detoxing is really important. And one way you can detox is by using essential oils instead of chemical products. So just think about that as we go through this. So hormones, hormones are very sensitive in the way that they communicate and any outside information that is confusing them can be to your detriment. So we are in an environment where it's full of synthetic estrogens, heavy metals, plastics, and the more that we can avoid that, the better our hormones communicate. So we're going to focus on essential oils, but just a few notes, you know, besides the oils, definitely you need to be eating real food, getting sleep, just being around positive people, spending your time doing things you like. You know, if you hate your job, you're very unhappy in your marriage, 
all the oils in the world are, <laughs> are going to change that. Although they might start shifting your perspective so that you are enabled to make changes where you need to. So again, avoiding chemicals, handling stress, getting exercise, all these things are really important for hormones. So let's talk about a handful of hormones here. So many hormones in your body. When women talk to me about their hormones, usually they're asking me about estrogen, progesterone, cortisol. Occasionally they're asking me about thyroid. Frankly, they should be asking me more about insulin. And I think there's a little bit of a lack of training on that one. So we should talk more about that. But estrogen is your dominant female hormone, right? It's produced mostly throughout our lives. I don't know how much is produced pre-puberty. I'll have to look that up. But there's a certain form of estrogen produced in your reproductive years. And then another form produced more when you're pregnant. And then another form produced more postmenopausal. So sometimes what's happening when you moving into menopause that's difficult is your brain is getting a new type of estrogen delivered to it and it hasn't adapted to that new type of estrogen. So estrogen is used in the brain for communication, for proper brain function. There's estrogen receptors in the brain. So if you're moving from estradiol, which I think that's E1, I can't remember now, to I think it's E2 is the type of estrogen that is produced postmenopausal. Just that transition is difficult. Uh, so you wanna smooth it out as much as possible. And, you know, there is some just inherent difficulty there, right? The body is changing, just like with puberty. That can be a difficult thing for young women to go through. And as we age, it can be a little rocky too, but there are some things that, that smooth it out. Uh, thyroid hormone does so many things, controls metabolism that a lot of women are worried about. Uh, it also, low thyroid can slow your digestion, making you have, you know, uncomfort there or let, like a lack of nutrient absorption for your hormones, uh, keeps your temperature up, keeps your blood pressure up. So thyroid is an important player. And I just think with the toxins and complexity of modern life, thyroid is becoming a, a big issue, unfortunately. Cortisol, someone mentioned earlier, and this is a necessary hormone we need for energy throughout the day. So keep in mind that it's a natural, helpful hormone. It controls inflammation. It does a lot of good things. The issue is when you have chronic high cortisol because your body is perceiving chronic stress, whether that's emotional stress or physical stress, like from an infection or an injury. And when cortisol stays too high, it's too stimulating on the body, so to speak. It blocks communication again, like about hormones, about blood sugar. So we do want to manage cortisol and essential oils do that very well. Uh, insulin is a hormone that helps get sugar into your cells. Sugar is another bad word. But our main fuel is sugar that we use for our energy and we need it to get into our cells and not just hanging out in our bloodstream. So insulin is a very important hormone to do that. And if we are insulin, um, if we, if we aren't sensitive to the insulin trying to come into our cells, if we're blocking it, then we can have a problem with having chronic high blood sugar, which is another irritant to the system. We can be tired, even though we're eating, we can be gaining weight because this sugar in the blood needs to go somewhere. So it makes fat. And feel free to ask any questions about those in the chat. You're welcome to answer ask questions now and I'll answer them a little bit later. So I want you to know that your hormones do want to work right. So one day I was at a, a yoga studio and there was a woman who left class really quickly and she didn't come back. And then I heard her on the phone later in the lobby and she was complaining to her roommate or girlfriend or whoever like that she hated her uterus because she was having really bad cramps and she wasn't able to do yoga. And it just made me cringe because your uterus is not working against you. It does not want to work against you in the least. It's just that we haven't given it the right thing so it can do its job. So some of these fundamental things are lowering stress, balancing blood sugar, clearing toxins, making sure you're having good bowel movements, 
and then just getting all the nutrition you need to create hormones to detoxify. So once one of those systems are all working correctly, hormones run a lot smoother. Okay, so we're getting started here. So weight management, this might not be everyone's issue on the call, but even if it's not weight, if you're having some issues with food cravings or feeling tired certain times of the day, I still would like you to listen in on this. So again, we talked just earlier about insulin and we really wanna keep blood sugar levels as stable as possible to have good energy throughout the day. And again, we want the sugars to get into the cells so those sugars aren't being stored as fat. So we're kind of looking at supporting your weight from like a metabolic standpoint. And we're also kind of looking at cravings. So lemon is an oil that you can use over your liver area. You can use it daily and it supports detoxification. So just supporting the liver and keeping things moving can help for weight. Peppermint is a you know a nice simple multi-use oil that can control your appetite, right? Using a little drop of peppermint after a meal can keep you from wanting to eat more. It also energizes you, it also treats headaches. So it's a really nice one to just kind of reset your mouth and and not want to eat more things. And then Slim and Sassy is one that is a blend that I really like. It has grapefruit and I think cinnamon, a a bunch of oils that support, again, that um, blood sugar sensitivity that you want to create. And it also helps for cravings and it helps move lymph out of the body. So if you're feeling, especially like, well, this is just one use. If you're feeling like, like kind of just bloated, and like you're having water under your skin or you have cellulite, you can use Slim and Sassy not only in your mouth for cravings, but you can rub it on your belly for weight loss in the abdomen. And you can also use a dry brush over top of it to help move cellulite and move lymph. So I think it's a really nice oil. Um, Let me see. Okay, so here's those three oils I mentioned, and I will send you all these slides, but you may want to take some notes about ones that sound good to you. And as we go along here, if I have an asterisk by an oil, it means that it comes in a starter kit. So they try to pick, you know, oils that you would need around your house quite a bit in a starter kit. It's not necessarily designed for hormones but every single one of these oils is useful in different ways as we'll learn. So a starter kit is the most affordable way to start uh, with an oil collection and it'll cover a lot of bases for you right out the gate. Okay, another issue, which is not usually people's primary issue, but as I got to talk to them, it's, it is an issue, <laughs> is they feel like they're aging prematurely with their skin or their hair is becoming dry or their hair is falling out. And of course, there's underlying issues behind that with health. So just getting really healthy is going to make you, frankly, look more beautiful. You can get your hair healthier, you can get your skin healthier. And essential oils are really good for this. I've been studying this a lot. So for skin, right in your initial kit is frankincense, which is a very expensive oil (laughs) normally. It's known as the king of oils. It's also good for sagging skin, wrinkling, scars on the skin. So you just put a drop in with your moisturizer and that's all you have to do a couple times a day. Or if you don't use a moisturizer, I really like using it with grape seed oil. It's fantastic. So I, I made my own little skin oil with frankincense. Melaleuca is also known as tea tree. And if you have any acne, you can dab that right on uh, an acne breakout. And another oil I wanna mention is Ylang Ylang, which is a nice oil for uh, your confidence and definitely hormone boosting, estrogen boosting, someone asked about, and sex drive. So if you have low sex drive, you can use Ylang Ylang as a body oil and it smells delicious. 
Um, it's going to put you more in a more relaxed and confident mood for sex. And then overall, it's a hormone balancer. Another one is orange. We're going to talk more about orange later. This is a uh, high in antioxidants for your skin. There's a little, little slight danger of it being photosensitive in the daytime. So I said to use it at night. And for hair, there's so much possibility with essential oils that people are not learning about. So a lot of oils have been studied to promote hair growth. And a lot of oils are just soothing and nourishing for the hair. So I didn't mention all the oils, but I actually have quite a few here. So peppermint we've talked about is so good for cleaning the scalp and getting oil off the scalp. It encourages hair growth and oil control. Ylang Ylang is another lovely one. I would probably use it with your conditioner. Just use a few drops with conditioner. It's smoothing for the hair. And again, it has this amazing scent. It's gonna make you feel very feminine. And then a few more. Rosemary is studied to be good for hair growth. Lemon, again, cleans those roots of the hair. Tea tree is good for like dandruff conditions. And lavender also promotes hair growth. So one study showed that over six or seven month period, peppermint worked as well as Rogaine, the prescription hair growth. These oils for hair regrowth do take a while and you should probably be working internally on your health as well, but I've been using a lot of them and I really love it. Here's some of those. And then digestion. So you might think digestion is not a hormone conversation, but if you don't digest well, you're not getting nutrients to make hormones. You have inflammation that can disrupt your hormones by blocking receptor sites. You could have a leaky gut, which causes autoimmune disease, and then you're going to have a hormone problem. Um, if you're not moving your bowels, you're going to have a toxin buildup, and hormones can recirculate back into your body when you're not moving your bowels. So lots of good reasons to support digestion. Also, most of our clients have indigestion that they notice in some way, like feeling bloated uh, is probably number one or being nauseous. So these three oils right here are the reason I started to sell doTERRA because I was very impressed by how well these three oils work together. And just coincidentally, they're all in a starter kit. So Digestin is a blend you may have heard of that's pretty well known for um, supporting digestion and helping for bloating, helping if you've eaten something that didn't agree with you. It has fennel and some other kind of warming, moving oils. Oregano is a very strong oil. It's a hot oil, so you have to be a little careful with it, uh, but it's good for gut infections and stomach flus. And then frankincense is an oil that increases digestive enzyme production, and then just relaxes any cramping in the bowels. So I would suggest to use it like this, either use Digestin just on its own with a little oil on your, on your stomach two to three times a day. And then you can also put a drop on your tongue before you eat, and it's going to stimulate digestion. And if you want to pump up the volume, so to speak, use those two to three drops of um, oregano and frankincense also on the gut with a carrier oil like coconut oil uh, and use that two to three times a day. So here's those oils. Okay, now we're getting into female hormones. And again, we all, you know, we're all dealing with hormones in every different stage of life. And it's just different manifestations depending what stage we're in. Okay, so here's some oils for hormones. And if you want to get deeper into it uh, with questions, we can. So lavender, you know, very basic oil. Everyone's heard of it, but it's good for menstrual cramps. It's good for headaches and tension. Now, these are more symptom Based, right? So a lot of what we can use essential oils for is symptoms. And we can also use it for the root cause. Lavender lowers cortisol, by the way, can help you sleep. Um, but it also can just be used for in the moment if you're having menstrual cramps or you're having a menstrual headache. Clary Calm, someone asked about earlier for menopause. 
So this is a pre-blended formula that comes in a what we call a roller ball. It contains clary sage, the other oil that's listed here. It also contains Vitex and a bunch of other oils. I can't remember what's in it right now. The main way to use that is twice a day on your abdomen. That's whether you're in menopause, perimenopause, you're still cycling, but your periods are irregular. The oils in there are intended to boost hormone production and create hormone balance. So that sounds a little general, but it's a blend. So all the different oils are working synergistically to just kind of balance things out, to support the ovaries, to talk to the brain and talked about, you know, to teach it what hormones to make um, and to just kind of smooth over imbalances. So my mentor in the space, Marisa Snyder, she was on a call with us uh, last month and she's really seen great results for it, for cramps, for hot flashes, for all sorts of, all sorts of problems. I've also been experiencing experimenting just with straight clary sage as well. You know, both of these smell a little funny. They don't, you know, they're not like my favorite smells in the whole world, but you know, that's just sometimes how it is. <laughs> like that's just, these are just ones that have that smell, but they have that purpose as well. So peppermint can be used a little bit, again, more symptomatically for hot flashes. So if you're dealing with hot flashes, you can make a little spray bottle with water and peppermint and shake it up and just spray it on yourself when you're having a hot flash. So that's pretty awesome and pretty handy to have around. So again, you wanna keep working on the hormones with like the Clary Calm and everything else you're learning today, but then you can have the peppermint in a spray bottle. Also good for brain fog, if like you're not thinking well. I mentioned earlier that when you switch from one estrogen to another, you may be just not remembering well, not thinking well, and please don't beat yourself up that you're losing your mind or anything. It's just a transition. So you just want to support your brain in that transition. And then a couple oils I really like for the adrenals, so to speak, uh, are basil and rosemary. So these don't come in a starter kit, but I think they're nice ones to have if you're working on low cortisol, exhaustion, low blood pressure. Uh, the basil is really nice and calming, but yet fortifying for the adrenals. And the rosemary, it's billed as a bit stimulating. I don't really feel like it's stimulating, but supposedly you can raise blood pressure a bit when you're having a low blood pressure and be a little stimulating. So I think these are really beautiful oils to have around. So I think there's several people with menopause in this crowd. So as we go into menopause, the basic fact is our ovaries are not producing as much hormone. They're still going to produce a little bit, which is why you can still use the Clary Calm and stimulate the hormones that way. But um, you really need to think about supporting the liver, supporting the adrenals, supporting the blood sugar. This is super important. So we talked about lemon with the liver or slim and sassy can help kind of move some lymph and detox you as well. And now I'm mentioning a couple for adrenals, basil and rosemary. Um, and then what else do we talk about? Oh, blood sugar, like the slim and sassy you can use. Um, we'll probably cover some more. So Again, working on stress, adrenals, blood sugar detoxification is really going to help you get through menopause easier. And a lot of these things you can hit with a starter kit, but you may want to drop, jot down a couple that sound really good to you. Like if you're just really exhausted, you might want to jot down rosemary, especially if your hair is falling out or getting dry. The rosemary is very good for that as well. So I wanted to mention thyroid in here. We did a talk on this yesterday or Thursday, um, but the frankincense in the starter kits is good for thyroid. Another couple that are well-known for thyroid are lemongrass and myrrh. Myrrh is very strong scent, very earthy scent. Lemongrass is a really pleasant light scent. And mainly these work by balancing the immune system, by giving you antioxidants by controlling inflammation. So they're just regulating the body in that way. So whether we're going through hormone changes, female hormone changes, or a thyroid condition, 
you just want to get all the systems in the body working smoothly, talking to each other well. And when you create a state of more balance and less stress in the body, then things that are off like low cortisol or low thyroid can start to recover and come back up. So again, you can use it on the uterus and ovaries if that's an area you're addressing. You can use it on the head and neck for headaches. You can use those adrenal oils on your adrenal area by your kidneys. You can put oils right on your thyroid for thyroid support. Anywhere you put them, they're going to go in and do their thing. But it's kind of nice to put them on the local area as well. So if you have more specific questions, if I didn't answer some of that, let me know. Let me go back. Somebody asked about hormone production. So I would say the Clary Calm, it would be a great place to start. And the basil and rosemary if you want to increase hormone production. Let me mention a few more while I'm here. Um, let's see. Cramps, Clary Calm, Clary Sage. Marjoram is also amazing for cramps. Uh, infertility, you can use a Clary Calm. If you're dealing with PCOS, I would really suggest working on the blood sugar with like the slim and sassy and the peppermint and probably the liver for detox or not, sorry, the lemon for detox. Just a little bit more notes on the thyroid. So there isn't like a magical oil for the thyroid or for menopause or for any of it, really. I mean, some are well known for this or that, but you do have to work on the whole system. So don't forget about that. Here's some of the oils we talked about. And moving on to energy. So when people say, well, I have low cortisol, or I have low this or that. I mean, really, it's like what symptom is coming up? Well, you're tired. You have no sex drive, right? These are probably some of the things you're experiencing. Maybe your skin is deteriorating. And oils really work kind of synergistically. So if I say, well, this oil is good for your skin, don't think it isn't also working on your insides. It definitely is. So lots of things we could talk about with energy. Oils are just one tool, but there's lots of things to think about getting outside, getting exercise, getting sunshine, dry brushing your skin. I mentioned earlier, I think is very energizing, helps you lose weight. Uh, using greens powder, using CoQ10. I just wrote an article about low hormone levels. If you didn't see that blog, you can go back to it. I talked about using lemon water. I talked about testing options for hormone levels. And some oils for energy are peppermint, deep blue, mainly, mainly because it controls pain. A lot of people are in pain and that's why they have low energy. Wild orange is really nice, kind of helps with depression and mood. I think I need some of that today, actually. <laughs> I'm sort of in the second half of my period and feeling kind of down. So sometimes, you know, like if you're dealing with low progesterone, you might also be like dealing with depression or anxiety. And you can be using your Clary Calm and your wild orange. And as you get to know the oils, you just get a little more savvy about how to combine them and what, what you need on any given day. Basil and rosemary we talked about already as being boosters for the adrenal glands. So these aren't going to give you energy like immediately, like the orange or the peppermint, but over time, they will. You got to give it some time, right? If you're in adrenal exhaustion, it took you a long time to get there. And realistically, it could take you a year or two to get out of it completely, but you'll see in changes along the way. So you can, again, sniff them, put them on the body and smell them. Some citrus oils will cause you to sunburn faster. Uh, my friend said this is mostly just bergamot is the main one that causes that. But the way I learned it was, you know, any citrus oil could. But, um, you know, if you're very fair skinned, don't go to like a baseball game with orange oil all over your body. There's these oils. 
and moving into sleep. So as people are going through perimenopause or just high stress or, you know, living in a stimulating environment and not getting a good night's sleep. If you don't sleep well, you're going to not eat well because you're going to just crave quick energy from pasta and cookies. You're not going to think well, you're going to be moody. So sleep is super important and you don't want to just get addicted to Ambien or whatever. I think essential oils are very powerful for sleep. You can use them in a diffuser or you can put them in a tissue on your bed or you can just smell them. Here are a few. So lavender and frankincense come in a starter kit. They're very calming. You could use them together to lower cortisol and help you just calm down from a busy day. Ylang Ylang I've mentioned before is I love this oil at night. It's both somehow relaxing and I wouldn't exactly say energizing, but it sort of picks you back up. So like if at the end of the day, you're just spent and like, just feel like life has taken everything from you, you know, take a bath and then put on some oil with Ylang Ylang. You're going to feel relaxed. You're going to maybe be more interested in sex if that's something that you're working on. So I really love that oil. Clary sage is a natural sedative in addition to being good for hormone balance. So that could be one to, you know, have in your collection. And then serenity is my favorite for sleep. It's a blend that is kind of floral and lowers cortisol. And this is our favorite one, like just hands down. And I use it in the daytime too, if I'm just having a really anxious moment. So we talked a bit about the uses. Here's a diffuser that comes in one of the kits. And here's some of those oils we talked about. So again, jot some down if you're like, ooh, I want to try that one. Jot it down. And then let's talk about mood. So I think a lot of women are blaming their hormones on their mood, which is accurate, right? But you don't have to have your hormones all fixed to just shift your mood. So you can use that, like that orange oil I mentioned to shift your mood. There's another oil called citrus bliss. That's a blend of like citrus and vanilla. I completely am addicted to that smell. It's, it feels very expansive. It feels very positive when you're feeling down. Uh, I also use it to meditate sometimes that one. Peppermint, we've mentioned a few times, very good pick me up. Lavender can calm you down. Ylang Ylang we talked about already just kind of smooths everything out and makes you feel like you got a little get up and go again and just makes you feel good about yourself. And frankincense we mentioned is grounding and then basil is just very balancing. So We've talked about basil being good for the adrenals. So just know like in the moment, it can make you feel more at peace and centered, but then over time, it's working on your adrenals to support them. Moods, really smelling isn't very important for moods. So you, you get that quick reaction when you smell it, either just be sniffing it or put it on your skin. And I usually encourage people to take three deep breaths. You probably need three deep breaths anyways, like right? we all need to stop and remember to breathe deeply. So just do it with your oil. Take three deep breaths and things will be shifting for you. Especially if you, you know, you give it that intention. Like if you say, you know, I'm smelling my serenity oil now and I'm calming down from this busy day and I'm looking forward to a relaxing evening and you know, you're sn sniffing, you're creating that intention, and then the oil is working to basically message your brain to calm you down as well. Here's some of these babies. This wild orange, by the way, is free this month. I'll tell you more about that soon. And then lastly, I wanted to talk about non-toxic home. So this is really important in the conversation about hormones because the toxins in our environment, I think are the number one reason our hormones are so messed up. Probably number two is stress or maybe they compete, 
but I think people blame everything on stress, but the toxic load in our environment is insane now with exhaust, with our, you know, our paint and our floors off gassing, our car off gassing. And we use beauty products that have phytoestrogens. If we eat at a restaurant or having meat that has hormones in it. So we're just getting exposed all the time. So whatever you can control, please, please do. And mostly what you can control is your home, right? Making sure you have clean food, non-toxic beauty products, non-toxic cleaning products. Essential oils can do a bunch of stuff in this category. So that lemon you can use for your liver, but you can also use it to you know, spray into a stinky trash can. You can use it to clean um, countertops. You can use it to clean sticky goop that your kids got on the wall, leather, silver. It's pretty diverse. It cleans a lot of stuff. Um, tea tree, you could make your own like mouthwash with it. Deep blue we mentioned is really great if you're using too much Advil, you're using, you know, kind of, I don't even know what that stuff is called, that muscle cream, but um, yeah, it's just like a natural pain reliever. Breathe is one I, I definitely think every family should have because it helps open your airways. If you're feeling congested from a cold or something in the air irritated you, so it's a really nice one to have around and that can replace like cough syrup and that kind of a thing. And then On Guard, you may have heard of, um, helps with um, both killing bacteria and viruses and also boosting your immune system through antioxidants. So there's different ways to use these, you know, spraying it on surfaces, diffusing it, cleaning your hands with it. Um, there's a gazillion uses and it's just little by little you learn to use it. Like maybe you remember Oh, oh, you know what? One other thing I forgot to tell you, lemon cleans stainless steel appliances. So if you are still using something toxic to clean your fridge, use a lemon and water spray. So basically, I just encourage you to remember this conversation. And, you know, when you get a lemon oil from us, hopefully <laughs> you remember, oh, what did she say about how to use it? And then you go look it up and then you make your spray. So here's a few of those products. So I'll go look at the questions in a sec, but I wanted to share how you can be in our doTERRA family. And I'm not sure who else is on the call now, but I want to thank Maria for being a customer. And she's here learning about her oils, which is so great. Um, really, the best way to start is with a kit. So I've also done, like with Maria, we've done a small hormone kit where we did like Clary Calm and Elang Elang, some of the ones I mentioned today that are special. So you can certainly just start an account and order a few special oils. doTERRA doesn't really let me do, do the manual ordering the way I was. It's kind of a long story, but it's better that you go to the doTERRA website because they want you to like, you know, agree to the terms and whatever on their own site. So I'm just going to teach you how to do that today. But long story short, the most affordable way to start is with one of the kits they offer because it waives your membership fee and you get 10 oils right away and you often get some other little extra freebie. So like this kit you're seeing here, basically the cost of the diffuser is written off, so to speak, when you buy the kit as well as like you get your membership fee waived. So I'll tell you more about that. Uh, why I work with doTERRA, someone said, well, why did you choose doTERRA? Well, frankly, I just sort of happened into it from different friends doing it. And you know, I wasn't like a big decision, um, but, you know, I just trusted people I knew and checked out the oils. I really liked using them. And then really it wasn't until later till I started to understand the company better. And the company is pretty amazing. Um, they do so much work with communities across the world. Uh, the quality is just completely predictable. You know, no matter when you buy an oil, it's going to smell the same as when you bought it three years ago. That's not easy. They do that from really working with their farmers, testing every batch. So, you know, there's no pesticide residue. There's, there's no junk in the oil. It's just the pure oil. Here's a few examples of some of the, the work they do. So again, they work with 
uh, farmers in their communities, giving them fair wages, giving them contracts, which a lot of these people aren't getting, you know, from other big companies. And then they'll build schools in the area if that's what they need or help them get water. They do a lot for, for women with like girls who've been sex trafficked, which is pretty amazing. And then they work here in this country with different problems that come up in this country, like the Santa, Santa Rosa fire last summer. Now there's a new fire this summer, which sucks. Uh, here's a little bit about the testing, some of the ways that they test um, the batches for purity. A lot of big words here. <laughs> But, you know, the basic region, there's no fungus, there's no heavy metal, it's not a, a false oil, they, they know exactly what's in the batch, otherwise they throw it out. So doTERRA from month to month will do different specials, and this month they have a really, really good special. You get, if you buy a kit or a product over 200, what they call PV, 200 points, um, then you get these two free oils. And the value of these oils is about $65 retail. So it's a pretty great deal. So you'll get the 10 oils in the kit, plus a wild orange that we talked a bit about, and plus copaiba, which is a really special oil we're going to talk about in a minute. This kit is called the Home Essentials Kit. So you can make a note of that. And then you get a diffuser in this kit. So you can start you know, having another way to use it right away. And then the second kit that's available is called Family Essentials. So it's a little cheaper price point at $150. You get 10 oils, but they're a little smaller size. And you get two beadlets, which are a little like what you're seeing here, a little tiny, it's a quarter drop of a oil in a capsule. So you can crack it in your mouth or swallow it. So they're pretty fun. So you get 10 little oils and two beadlets, and then you get still a free wild orange. And that's a family essentials kit again. And some other things you'll get are a ebook called Hormone Rescue Guide that has some cooking recipes and essential oil blends. It's pretty strong in the menopause sector. So if you're here for menopausal answers, I would think about buying now because you can get this great guide. And then we send you an ebook about how to use essential oils. And we'll put you, if you have Facebook, in a two-week training program to get to know your oils. Now by mail, I can send you a few more things. If you are in the US and Canada, I can send you kind of like a product guide, a little booklet with like 400 uses of oils, and then I'll send you some samples. I was sending this all over the world, but it was starting to be like losing money situation <laughs> from sending it all over the world. So I'm kind of backing off, but I may find a way to do it more. But don't worry if you're from another country, we'll still hook you up. I will say though, let me go back. Um, not every deal is available in every country. So you can order from many countries, New Zealand, Australia, Germany. Sadly, I learned that not the deals are different in every country. So if you're, I know somebody contacted me from Australia last night. If you're in Australia, you would log in, click that you're from Australia, and then you'll see whatever special they have that month. I really wish they would keep it same across the world, but for some reason it's different. But US and Canada are always the same. So just a little caveat there. Wild orange we talked about as being good for mood. It smells good, but it also kills germs. So you can use it for cleaning or an air spray. I use it like in the bathroom as a spray and it's energizing. Copaiba is a very special, special oil. So it stimulates your cannabinoid receptors. So you, if you've heard of cannabis, right, which is from marijuana plant, that's not the only place cannabinoids come from. They come from lots of different plants. So copaiba has a compound, I think it's called CBA or CPA. I'm sorry, I don't remember, but... Um, it has a compound in it that is good for pain, anxiety, insomnia, and it's in a higher amount than in CBD oil. So you don't have to worry about like, is it safe to buy it or any of that stuff? And it's going to work really well on those cannabinoid receptors that make you feel calm, stop the loop of pain, stop the loop of anxiety. This is good for PTSD, uh, restless leg, 
it's pretty cool and I don't own it yet, but I'm buying it on my next oil on my next order because I'm pretty excited about it. So I already have an account, so I don't get the free oil. Uh, Maria won't get the free oil. <laughs> she already has an account, but it comes for the new accounts. And if you go to my website, it'll click you through to some things. So I just want to show you how to do that real quick. I'm going to go over here. So here's my website, BridgetDanner.com. And um, if you go under shop and then doTERRA essential oils, whoops, that's not what I wanted. You get to this page and there's basically two buttons. One says start a wholesale account. I'm going to walk you through that. Another is just set, schedule a consult. So if you're like not sure what to buy, whatever it is, just want me to make the order for you, then schedule and we'll talk. But please schedule by Tuesday because that's the July deadline. I opened up some slots for you. If you want to make a wholesale account and do it yourself, I just want to walk you through it because I don't want it to be confusing as you do it. So you'll come to this page, da, 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 and you'll choose to be either a wholesale customer or the second option is to be a wellness advocate. That means that you're sharing the oils and you're reselling the oils. It's, it's the same price, either one. So if you think you want to do this as a business, I would say schedule with me so we can talk more about it and you can understand it. It's 35 for a year. And when you renew, it's 25 and you get a free oil. So you click on this. Again, I, if you're in a different country, it'll give you some options for other countries to see what deals you've got going on there. But I'm just going to click US English. You put in your name, your birthday, you make a password, you choose, do I want to be a wholesale customer? That's the default or a wellness advocate. And then you click continue. So I didn't fill it out yet, so it's not going to let me continue. Um, shoot, it did this thing again. Maria, your stuff keeps populating. <laughs> um, and then the next tab will let you select a kit, which is optional. But if you want to start with a starter kit, it's again, kind of the most economical and you can choose that. If you don't want to, you just want to buy a few things, you go to add other products. Or if you want to buy a kit and uh, I really wanted to try that Clericom, then you add it to the order. You review the order, you get the shipping address, and then you pay. So it's pretty easy. You know, it just, just takes a few minutes and then you have an account for life. Um, it's pretty great. And there's different specials that happen all the time. You're kind of scrolling across here. Um, that's the special of the month. So yeah, I hope that helps. Let me see if I had any other slides, but I don't think I do. So let's get back to some of these questions. Thanks everybody. So Angela mentions that palma rosa has been studied to enhance the microbiome of the gut and aid the small intestine in bloating. Great. That's a great tip. Thank you, Angela. Palma rosa is the name of that one. Can you use Clericom only when not on your period? I don't think so. I think you can use it anytime. I tend to not use it on my period just because I don't know, like I want a little break from using it all the time, but I don't think there's any harm in using it all the time. It's just a balancer. Some people really need it for cramps, so they would definitely use it on their period. Thanks, Pat. Um, Sanjay asks, what's the difference between lime and le lemon vis-a-vis -vis the liver? Mm, that's a good question. So, you know, lime and lemon, the main compound they have is D- what's it called, D-limaline or D-limalel, I can't remember. <laughs> and I think that lemon just has a higher quantity of that. But that's a little bit more complicated of a question, Sanjay. I would have to look that one up for you. Any essential oil has like certain percentages of compounds in it. And I think it just has a little different profile. But I certainly hear about lemon way more than lime. They just sold lime on the a special they had recently. Uh, they sold um, lime with tangerine and anyways. And I really regret I didn't buy it because I used it recently. The lime is very pleasant um, and they're probably similar. 
but I would have to look up that question for you to say exactly what the difference is, but I'm going to make a, an assumption, which may or may not be correct, that the lemon is a little more biologically active for the liver. It's also, it's an anti-cancer compound. Do essential oils act like xenoestrogen? No, they don't. There's been a lot of rumors about that um, because there was really a, some poor science about, oh, you know, these, these boys were using lavender and they grew boobs. You don't lose, grow boobs from using lavender. You grow boobs from being exposed to estrogen in your meat and your milk and your shampoo. So that was a really flawed study. So they, they don't work as xenoestrogens um, in that way. It's a good question. Do they affect testosterone? Yeah, some oils affect testosterone. I would think the Ylang Ylang does because it increases sex drive. I know I learned one for men for testosterone and I'm just totally blanking on what it is now. So I need, you're going to ask me some tough questions. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to have to look that up. But some will affect testosterone. I just don't want you to think they affect it like, a, like, oh, I'm taking an estrogen pill or a testosterone pill. You know, nature doesn't work like that. It just, nature is like a balancer, right? It's they're not giving you synthetic hormone. They're just encouraging normal function, right? And it's normal for us to have estrogen and testosterone. So it's just balancing that out. Are essential oils labeled for their purpose and suggested dosage? Not really, no. What they will have on the label that is of note is if you can take it internally, it'll have nutrition facts. So if you look on the back of certain oils, it'll say nutrition facts, zero calories, whatever, it doesn't say much. That means you can take it internally. If it doesn't say that, don't take it internally. They don't have purpose, dosage on the bottle. One, because it's small. And two, because with the FDA, it's a little limited what you can say about oils. Like I couldn't even say all this stuff on my blog. I have to say it on a webinar. You know, you can't make like any medical claims, right? Same with, you know, supplements will usually say, how many to take, but they have to be kind of vague. Um, but there's plenty of resources about how to use them. So we give you some about how to use them. We do the oil camp to train you. Um, you know, dose is dependent on the situation, right? With a, a child, you're going to use like one drop in, you know, a teaspoon of oil, something like that. And then with you know, an adult, sometimes you're going to put the oil straight on your body or just mix it one to one. I like using them strong. I'll be honest. I just like that. I've made different blends and I just, I'm not that into it. I'd rather just mix it right on my body based on what I need. So I'll just have a little coconut oil and a few drops of this and a few drops of that. And then that's my blend. That's my favorite way, but everyone's different. You can make your own blends and let them, you know, carry them in your purse, that kind of a thing. These are great questions, Sanjay. I really appreciate that. Oh, you got some more here. Suitable, unsuitable for men or women. That's also a good question. So some are a little bit more meant for men or women. I just, I'm kind of thinking the Clary Calm might increase testosterone in men. And I apologize, Sanjay, I don't have a lot of men information on this because we mostly have women in our community. Um, but the, there could be a couple that you want to use a little differently for men and women. Again, I don't have a ton of information on balancing men's hormones, but a lot of what we talked about, balancing blood sugar, supporting the adrenals, supporting detox is, is the same for men. But I think there's a few caveat, a few things like I should learn, like how to support testosterone in men. Men often want to reduce estrogen, right? Because they're getting too much or they're making too much versus testosterone. So let me look into that for you. Yeah, thank you. Essential oil versus tea. Yeah, we talked about that a little bit in the beginning. The oil is much more concentrated like incredibly much more concentrated. So if you want more of a therapeutic effect, 
I would do the oil. Like, let's say you drink a lavender tea at night. Yeah, oh, it's okay. I think it could be calming. You could be getting some benefit. You sniff that lavender oil for three breaths and it's already stronger than drinking the tea. So hope that helps. Does the essential oils react with plastic in a diffuser? No, because it's a cold air diffuser. So all it does is kind of bubble the water and make a mist and release the mist. It really doesn't get hot. It shouldn't get hot. One milliliter is how many drops? Are all bottles 15 milliliters? So uh, no, some bottles are only five milliliter. If you buy a, a, the smaller starter kit or a few oils only come in a five millimeter, five milliliter, like the deep blue, because it's just very expensive. But most of them come in 15 milliliters. One milliliter, how many drops is that? Um, let me think about that. I think 15 milliliters is about 150 drops or a little more. Five milliliters is 50-ish drops, a little more, I think. So one milliliter would be about 10 or 12 drops, I think. Give me some math. Can you use Copaiba Neat? I don't know. I think so. I don't think it's a hot oil, Pat, um, but I haven't owned it yet. Um, but I think so. You know, when you mix it with oil, it does make it last longer. So you might want to mix it with just a tiny bit of oil anyways. I think, Pat, were you asking yesterday about jaw pain? So if you have a strong pain that's really bothering you, I would say deep blue, copaiba, or marjoram. These, guys, these are very strong. I like the, frankly, I like the deep blue lotion better than the oil. It just works better for me. Um, the margarine is, marjoram is insane. It's like numbing for pain. I can't even believe it. It's very good. It doesn't smell amazing, but it's, it's very good. And the copaiba, my understanding is, is very strong for pain as well. Why is birthday required for ordering? They just, they're very high on security. So when you, if you lose your password and you call in, you say, this is my birthday. And then they'll reset your password. That's the only reason they do it. Yeah, you're welcome, Sanjay. Can essential oils cause side effects? I think in some cases, it's, it's, let me think, of, I, there's some more questions I, on another part I'll have to get to. Um, side of, mm, I think it's possible with kind of like incorrect use, right? Um, if you use a hot oil straight, it's gonna not cause like a permanent burn, it's gonna feel like a burning feeling on your skin. Um, if you use an oil like internally that wasn't meant to be that could cause, there was like a instance where a person drank like a whole bottle of essential oil to try to commit suicide and they got very sick. Like they had low blood pressure and they had to go to the ER. Obviously that's not the use, the way to use it. Um, so I think if you stay within the bounds of how to use them and you do some training, that's important. Um, what else was I going to say about that? And know your condition and your body. I mentioned at the start of the call that if you're chemically sensitive, you might react to essential oils, not because they're impure, just because your body is like overreacting to things. So a lot of people say, well, I'm, I think I'm allergic to an essential oil. You can't technically be allergic to it from my understanding, but there, I think there's a few instances that it could happen. So I've been using essential oils lightly for probably 13, 12 years and heavily for two years. And in that entire time, the entire time, I've only had one bad reaction, which is when I use cinnamon oil directly on my body and it burned. And then in, I just happened to hand something to my son around the same time and he turned red too. I couldn't believe it. And he didn't even really touch it. So that was the only thing. And it passed, you know, in 20 minutes. Um, but that was the it. So I, I don't think these things are very often, it happen very often, but I can never say never, right? Because you never know what can happen with supplements and oils. We're, we're all different. 
Okay, Pat says talking about TMJ. Yeah, Pat, that's great. I, I wonder also, Pat, do you see a chiropractor? Do you get that like jaw massage where they go in and uh, do that? Also, Pat, there's can be a couple other things with TMJ. High cortisol, 100%. So you need to lower your cortisol, Pat, at bedtime, especially. And then um, actually parasites and gut infections can make you have high cortisol at night. So over the night, as the body's repairing, if it's under a lot of stress, sometimes your cortisol will go up during the night. And sometimes that's gut infections. So I, Pat, I think you were in my gut restore cleanse, right? But that was not for parasites and bugs. So you might want to think about that or just consider that. We have a gut infection quiz on our website that you can ask us for. Um, yeah, so it's always good to dig a little deeper, right? So yeah, because some of these oils numb pain 100%, but also look for the root cause. Okay, we have some more questions. Connie with the chemical sensitivity said she's, she's kind of recovering. That's great, Connie. Diana asked about surgically induced menopause. That's a great question, Diana. Um, I would frankly act like you hadn't had surgery. <laughs> surgery. I would still kind of give your body the same information, like the Clary Calm and the basil, um, the detox. I would just kind of do the whole thing anyways, because your body, even if something's gone, it still is trying to find balance. So I, I would do a lot of the same things we talked about. Are there any oils that should never be mixed together? Not really, except for they just might not smell good if you mix them together. I've definitely done that a few times. Tea tree kind of ruins every other blend, <laughs> I feel like. Um, there's a few blends I make that I was like, that's gross. But I don't think there's any that um, will have a bad reaction. Are there any oils that can help with uterine fibroids and polyps? Yeah, so that's also a really great question. These things are usually caused by estrogen dominance. So you want to clear estrogen both in your diet, in your, you know, your lifestyle with makeup and food. Uh, with fibroids, I, I would probably recommend doing castor oil packs for both of these conditions. I think we're gonna write an article about that soon, but you can look up how to do a castor oil pack online. And then I would do like the clary sage, um, some of the lemon we talked about, what else? I almost wanna say something that's just sort of gonna move chi and blood in that area. And that whole Clary Calm blend definitely moves blood. I can feel it moving blood. I'd have to get a little bit more specific to like give you some better answers on that. They're probably in some of those guidebooks, but generally the principle is you want to lower estrogen and circulate the area. So great. These are really good questions. Um, could you use lime as a deodorant with a carrier oil? Yeah, I think that sounds good. Uh, the tea tree is also deodorizing a lot of oils or could be deodorizing because they're antibacterial. So many oils are antibacterial, but some of them smell better than others, like orange, lime. Um, tea tree doesn't smell the best, but it does work. Um, lavender is in my deodorant and it works really well. So sure, Diana, I think you could use that. We have an article coming out soon on deodorant and how to do an armpit cleanse that you can look out for. How long do the oils last? In the bottle, they last from like three to five years. On your skin, when you put them on, I can usually just smell them like for a couple hours maybe, and then they start to dissipate. Okay, these are great questions, you guys. And so we went a little little long on the questions. Hope nobody minds. Um, one more. And essential oil take, you can take. Ah, great question, Sanjay. You got some interesting questions. So yes, cilantro oil is a metal detoxer. 
and you can use it. I would probably pair it with doing like, um, like a citrus pectin. Um, you can pair it with doing a ionic foot bath for detox. What else could you do? Um, I think the digest zen would be supportive of while you did a detox to kind of keep everything moving and clearing. And the frankincense. I don't know what other oils for metal detox, but there's other supplements. I um, mean, you know, garlic is good, alpha lipoic acid, and acetylcysteine. So generally you want to pair oils with other stuff. I don't, I don't talk about all the other stuff because it's going to make the call too long, but you know, generally you want to pair it up. It's another tool for your toolbox. It's a really strong tool. I don't think any home should be without essential oils. Um, but yeah, we'll get the well-rounded San Sanjay. It sounds like you're pretty knowledgeable. So I think, uh, I think you got it. I think you'll be, <laughs> you get the background as well. That's a great question. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. I will send a link to follow up. One thing I don't love about Zoom is it doesn't like give me a button to like send you here and there, but I just put in the chat um, the page where you'd go to either schedule with me or start a wholesale account. My scheduling system won't let you schedule um, like the same day or next day. So if you want to schedule with me for Monday or Tuesday, I would suggest doing it today. Um, and then if you're going to have a busy work week, I would suggest if you want to get the July specials to just take care of it this weekend before you forget. Um, but I will send this recording by email and I'll send uh, the slides by email. So if you want to review anything, um, that's great. I appreciate all the really good questions. I appreciate you guys being here on a Saturday morning. That's fantastic. I really appreciate it. You got my weekend off to a, a nice start with all this interest and great questions. So I really appreciate the curiosity. You know, a lot of people in this world aren't curious about how to fix their health. And then there's some people who really do it. <laughs> so, you know, really just staying with it, no matter if you feel like you've tried everything. I think persistence is a key ingredient to, um, health and also having fun. So I think essential oils are a ton of fun. We provide a lot of community and a lot of resources. So it doesn't always have to be like a big drag to get healthy, right? You can just like enjoy oils, enjoy experimenting. It's very creative. You can make gifts for people. You can, you know, share it with friends. It's really fun. So if you've been thinking about it and you haven't taken the plunge, I really encourage you for, to do it in July. This is the best special I've ever seen with these two really high dollar oil. Orange is not high dollar, but Copaiba is very expensive oil. So if you're thinking of taking the plunge, you know, you're going to get 12 oils and a diffuser and like, you're just going to be set. You won't need to buy anything for a while if you don't want to. So I'd encourage you to hop on it in July and just, um, just email me or schedule with me if you have any questions. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Thanks to everybody for being on. I think some people came in a little late saying hello to you too. Um, great. Thanks, Diana. Thanks, Connie. And I will talk to you guys later. Next month, we're going to do a couple case studies. I think that'll be really fun. So um, you, I'll, I'll mention that if you want to apply to be a case study, we're going to do that call um, next month. So thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.